I was obsessed, is a good word, with a question, and the question was why would human beings produce two camps and then produce a massive arsenal of hydrogen bombs and I don't know what you know about hydrogen bombs, but they have atom bombs for triggers and you know, that's worth thinking about, because an atom bomb, you know, hey, that's that's something but a hydrogen bomb, that's the sun that's really something so, and you know, there's twenty, they're at, at, at the peak of the cold war, and there's, this is still true to some degree there were literally tens of thousands of these weapons aimed at the Soviet Union and at the West and that was enough to pretty much put an end to everything and that's a dangerous game, man you know, and not only because of intent, but also because of the possibility of accidental just an accident, you know just, just a mistake, or just someone who's a little crazier than you might want them to be you know, and you might think, well, no one would want to bring about the destruction of the world, but that just means you don't know very much about Stalin because of all the people who lived in the 20th century who had power Stalin was the most motivated to bring everything to an end um, there's some evidence that he was murdered by Khrushchev and his crew, and Khrushchev was the next leader and if he wasn't murdered, he was at least not provided with medical attention when he was dying and uh, there is reasonable evidence that he was gearing up to invade Western Europe and he didn't really care how much destruction would go along with that I mean, he'd already killed tens of millions of people he had a lot of practice he was good at it it didn't really bother him maybe he even enjoyed it so what the hell? that's what I thought how can it be that we are doing this? it's so insane and so then I started to think about belief systems, you know because you could say that each camp had its own belief system the one in the west was derived it had a very lengthy history de derived from the Greeks and the Romans and the Jews and the Christians and, and from various schools of philosophy and from the Enlightenment and all of that and then the Soviet Union was basically predicated on a rational philosophy that, that opposed the axioms that the West had evolved and each group organized their societies around that and you know, I took political science for quite a long time and the political scientists and the economists they basically thought that people competed over resources uh, but that wasn't a very good answer as far as I was concerned because it wasn't obvious to me why people valued the resources they valued there was, the economists just assume that there's resources that you value but, you know, people can value a lot of different things it's, it's not exactly fixed I mean, you tend to value food very highly if you're hungry, obviously but, you know, there's lots of things that we value and that we want that seem somewhat arbitrary somewhat like a decision so I got more interested in why people valued things and what it meant to value something and then what it meant to believe something and then how it could be that someone could believe something so deeply that they would risk their own death to protect it or at least risk the death of other people and, and maybe on a massive scale like, man, people are committed to their, to their system now, you know a system of belief is not just a system of belief that's one of the things that I came to understand is that it's not appropriate to make this too psychological people defend their belief systems but that's not exactly right, you know we have a shared belief system well, it's sufficiently shared so that here we are we don't know each other we're a bunch of primates we're in this room and it's peaceful and no one's scared and, and that's pretty amazing, and that means that we're all acting out our roles so, we're acting out our roles, and we have an expectation with regards to those roles and those two things match and that's the important thing, and we'll talk about that a lot 
it isn't the belief system, or the integrity of the belief system even it's the match between the belief system and the actions of the other people within the belief system what you want to maintain is that match you want to act out your beliefs in the world and you want what you want to happen that's a good thing, you get what you want and you validate your belief system great, perfect, security but a lot of that is, if we're interacting, even right now there's a whole set of expectations that are governing what we're doing like you don't want me to take your, your little tablet there and smash it that would be shocking, right? you wouldn't know what the hell to do right, you'd be somewhere different if I did that and you wouldn't know where you were and that's another thing to know because that's a fundamental difference there's a fundamental difference between knowing where you are and not knowing where you are I, I think it's in some sense the fundamental difference you can think about it as the distinction between explored and unexplored territory but you have to I don't know if you've ever taken a cat to a new house cats hate that and because in their old house, and maybe in their old neighborhood, they've slunk around you know, at the edges, checking everything out they start out afraid they check everything out, they know where to hide, they know, where to, they know, they know, they know what, what's safe and they know that because they go somewhere, and nothing happens, and so then they assume that it's safe and they slowly build up a neighborhood that they're comfortable with my dad used to take the dog for a walk, and then the cat got lonesome, and so it started to follow him and first of all, it would just go along the buildings, the houses, on their route you know, hiding really from predators and after a while I got kind of comfortable with that, and then it would follow right behind the dog but it had a border, and if my dad took the dog over one street too many for the cat the cat would just sit on the corner and, and you know cry like a cat cries, it was like that's it for me man, I'm not going any farther out into the unknown and so, the, the distinction between the territory that you have mastered and the territory that you haven't mastered is a fundamental distinction it's the distinction between home and, and, and the strange land and the thing about familiar territory for people is that most of the familiar territory that we inhabit is other people because we're so social so you can't really think, it's a weird way of thinking about territory it's not exactly geographical, objective territory it's territory with a dominance hierarchy in it and the dominance hierarchy has a predictable structure and you know where you fit in it most of the time and so that when you act out in that territory surrounded by your people then often you get what you want and you're so thrilled about that, because